Good afternoon to all. So we'll start our uh, third session for the day. Now with this, uh, Nirmal Sahib, uh, advisor of the system and currently vice president of uh, R&D product development at the uh, Super Crop Safe and the. So he has more than uh, 20 years of residency experience, including 10 years in industry and mentor and guide for startups. Uh, he majorly works on microbial biotechnology for the commercial inputs. Okay. So commercial input for the agricultural, phytoformulations, both agriculture and human and plant tissue culture in commercial aspects. So he has... <coughs> So mentor for the bio uh, technopro EDI GS BTM. Uh, well, he, he's also serves as advisors uh, to the incubators and incubators for Bionest Bayrak program at CST Innovation and AAC Niti Ayoga at GPU and the so, He has guided more than uh, 60 students for uh, post graduation thesis work. And has a citation of 8,843 with the publications, uh, numerous publications. And this, with this uh, short introduction, I welcome uh, Dr. Nirmal Sahib to the guest lecture. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Amar. As far as the today's discussion is concerned, it is going to be on basically the grassroots innovations, innovations, particularly the <coughs> grassroots innovations of Sisti and the formulation which Sisti Lab has developed. So, as far as the practices is concerned, by now you people would have been aware with what kind of practices we have documented. Those who have not yet seen the practices, they might <coughs> visit the website of SRISTI, go to the library and the published database by putting the any keyword related to search means whether it is a paste or pathogen or any kind of problem. If in our database there will be practices, you will be able to see that. In this uh, slide, you are looking the a formulation for, for the scale insects. This has been done in the formal science by using some plants. The plants which is being used for this formulation was Tradex, Vidalia, and the uh, choir is used for the vermiculture, and the vermi wasp is being used as one of the components in the formulation. So as far as the formulation is concerned, it requires, of course, the main ingredients. Apart from the main ingredients, there could be some other ingredients which may be responsible for enhancing the activity of the main active ingredient or may substitute uh, the uh, or supplement the activity of main ingredient or may help in some other activities, say for example, in stabilization and the property enhancement. The purpose of showing this slide, the formulations for the pest control is not being uh, made only from the active ingredients as in the case of chemical industry. Say for example, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides being made by the <coughs> industry. It is being also developed from the plant which is less harmful for the environment. This is another formulation which we have developed in Sristi. It is uh, based on the grassroots innovations by adding value in them and it has been tested on several crops and it was showing very good results. The practice which we have selected was reported from not one places but from many many places of the village. So it's this formulation was a combination of various practices where we have selected the main ingredient, main ingredient of various practices, and based on that develop a formulation. 
this was another practices where we would like to say the, uh, how many kind of ingredient can be in a, a formulation it may be of uh, one for, uh, ingredient maybe a multi ingredient but the important thing is if it is a multi ingredient formulations we need to check by permutation combination the efficacy without checking the, uh, the efficacy of 1 plus 1 1 plus 2 2 plus 1 we cannot do the formulation so if there, there are more than one formulation we need to check the combinations result of the particular insects only then it can be further developed into the, in the form of products there are several practices in CST database which says we uh, more than uh, which talks about more than one ingredients all the ingredients have that role in the control of some insect or paste or pathogens. This is another formulation which is from the NIF sites. <clears throat> this is also a grassroots formulation. These are the websites which have been given in the uh, uh, invitation which uh, you have been given to the reading materials. I am just showing a uh, glimpse of that to rejuvenate the things. And this is the practices on our <coughs> website. If you log on this history database, go to the library and then uh, search the published practices, you will get this page. Here with the search icon, you can put whether it is, you can write the name of any paste or pathogens or any crop related, related to that particular key, whatever the practices is having in history database that will come up. In detail, you then you can click on detail to see the detail of the practices. See, this is the practices from Bihar where the innovator is uh, controlling the sucking pest in the paddy. And the plant being used is Pedalia ferrata, the Naria, which is a very common plant and grown wildly. And this plant is giving very good result as per the innovators. We do have to test this formulation and found that this was uh, showing the result as per the claim of the innovator. This is another practices to control the spot disease in sorghums, where the plant used was clerodendron. Clerodendron is also a roadside plant. It is growing widely everywhere. And when this practice was tested in the lab, it was found positive. This was another plant which is uh, giving the not only in the earlier practices, this was able to control this spotigia fungal disease. But as per this innovator, it is also acting as a bird repellent. While farmer is putting the seed in the soil, it is a very common practice. Some birds is coming and eating some of the seed which is on the above of the ground. To control that, this kind of formulations can be spread to prevent the to repel the birds. This is another practice to control the stem borer in the mage, where the plant uses limonium acid as well. This is another formulation to control the leaf curl in danger and chili. The purpose of showing these practices is there are several such practices. Whether this practice is working or not, this is the first job to validate the claim. If we found the claim is correct, then and the efficacy is good, then we can develop the formulation on such kind of practices. By doing this kind of validations, Sisti Lab has developed several formulations, several formulations of, of purple paste on grassroots practices to control different different pests. See, this is the formulation which is called Sastri, and this is a this was developed by combining by pulling the practices, by pulling not only a single practices but the ingredient of several practices. And it is able to control almost all kind of sucking paste. Sucking paste means the, uh, that means uh, white fly or the uh, uh, creeps, some kind of creeps, as well as the uh, in Gujarati it is common called molomasi. 
Molumas is with uh, uh, basically the FX kind of things. So, and this comes into the Sati phase. Sati phase, ideologically, if you try to classify it, belongs to the, uh, there are three orders that is the Lepterans, Depterans, Hemipterans, and Coleopterans. Almost all phase belong to this. Those phase which Eats the eats the leaves. They're, they're, they can be classified as chewing kind of pests. And those which sucks the sap of the plant, they are classified as sucking pests. So this formation is basically developed for the sucking pests, for the appeared desid white white like kind of things. This is another formation. This is uh, this is called prias, which has been developed also developed by pulling the practices by mixing the ingredients of several practices, and this is able to control the dropping of the flower as well as the increase the fruit number of fruit sets. This is another formulation which we have developed at Chef Kushak for leaf, leaf curl at the <clears throat> Calliopis, then Prahar for the mites, Suraksha for the termites, Sakti was in another growth promoter, then Sarvati for <coughs> different nematodes and the sucking and chewing post exposed. So the <coughs> purpose of showing all these slides was to show by validating the claim, what the innovator have claimed, whatever practices we have found positive. We have pulled several such ingredients or ingredients of, of such practices and then developed the formulation. Formulation means we have decided for one uh, initially for one ingredient which we may call the active ingredient. Active ingredient, uh, ingredient are generally the active uh, chemical compound which is responsible to give the effect. In developing the formulation, we have decided the plant which is the main plant of the validated practices which is giving the effect then these the, is there any other plants which can supplement the efficacy of these plants so based on that secondary tertiary quarterly ingredient ingredient was decided and then they were mixed together to further validated and the formulation was developed and evaluated so this is the flow chart for the formulation development so initially we need to procure the plant material, then process that, do the QC. QC means the whatever the plant we are telling it is the limonium acidisma or nerium, it needs to be taxonomically <coughs> checked and identified. And based on that, that, that is, uh, if the plant is authenticated, then further we can do the extraction as per the other innovators practices or, or whatever the value addition we have made that means farmers are generally doing the extraction in water water means that extraction is aqueous extraction they make to do the cold extraction or hot extraction normal innovator practices of hot extraction is they reduce the volume of the water to one third or half but whether that is sufficient to get the kind of compound needed to con control the kind of claim we are developing the policy. So for that, we have tried different other solvent also and do the extraction uh, by means of normal scientific means of uh, by applying succinate or the distillation things. Doing that, we have taken the crude extract and that crude extract was mixed and the formulation was developed. Here, after mixing, we do check the formulation through the uh, normal TLC. TLC is the <coughs> thin layer chromatography. And the kind of band we have found that we can identify, uh, uh, that we, we can mark as a marker for those particular formulations. If the plant is collected in the same season, particularly the, uh, the season is more important to get the similar kind of band. We need to mark that, which season it is collected and what kind of band pattern we have got in that formulation. So batch to batch, we need to make the band pattern based on the season in which the particular month that plant is collected. So we have uh, <clears throat> established our own QC for the check the efficacy of batch to batch of efficacy as well as the field efficacy. 
after that the normal process of bottling or the uh, packaging as uh, usual it is being developed and that need to be authentic uh, authenticated means the we need to follow the labeling criteria for labeling bottling criteria for bottling and as well as the uh, regulatory norms what does the regulatory norms says about the selling of such kind of products we need to follow that too if the license is required we need to get the license if it is not required we need to get the letter from the local agricultural uh, department for such formulations since it is under the ipm or the traditional knowledge kind of thing so no license is required that kind of letter is necessary if otherwise you may take currently there is the provision of stimulant where you can take the license for EGT license also. So these are the SPLC peaks. You may develop the uh, <coughs> chromatogram in the form of peak for your formulations, or you may not, depending upon your interest, how long you can stick to the formulation before changing that. Changing means if you want to further improve the same uh, formulation for the <coughs> Better result for different certificates, and then you need to change the formulation. And in that case, you may not stick to the same formulation. You have you will get the different band pattern or the peak uh, if you change the ingredient. So because of that region, the season and the band pattern is important. These are the bands of the FTLC bands of different different plants. Here we have put the uh, code of the plant. This is the aqueous extract. This is uh, methanol extract. This is chloroform extract. This is extract in the petroleum ether of same code number of the plant. Mm -hmm. Likewise, <coughs> we have tested that the FTLC again different different proportions of, of different extracts. So here E. coli, then the uh, other uh, bacillus, fusarium, then this lago. Different kinds of uh, paste were tested again, different formulas, different extracts, and whichever was found, even depending upon the inhibition efficacy that was reported in the, in the uh, millimeter, that means the halo region created on the plate. So that is uh, measured and reported. The colored one was showing the highest efficacy, so it was marked like that. This is the plate assay for the fusarium and, and the extract was of fruit from the Dalenex. So you can see this halo region. This halo region indicated the control, and that is being measured as a millimeter, millimeter size. If it is 20 or more than 20, that extract is considered best to control the pathogens. Likewise, this is the other extracts. As I told, whatever formulation we have developed, we need to get the registration or the <coughs> criteria for on which we are able to go into the market. So it may be a traditional formulation, practice based, or maybe component of IPM because not in under the uh, IPM different plants name are mentioned. If the plant coming into that category, you may claim that the our formulation is grassroot, but it is coming under IPM too. Then if the plant is uh, active compound is identified, you may go for the CIV registration. For CIV registration, we must know the compound and we must test it. It's, it's not only for the efficacy, but for or for also it's the the bad effect or the hazardous effect on the animal systems. That data need to be must for the CIV registrations. Then, if it is a, acting as a stimulant as well as the protectant of the insect, we may take the biostimulant license under the criteria of G2, which is recently, last year, the budget was released for that. I will show you some other slides. For the development of formulation, the important thing on what basis we can you can select the practices. So these are some of the points which is important in general for almost all kind of formulation, but it is 
Is it not visible? Ah, yes. Testing it. Is it visible now? Uh, no doubt. Is blank screen. It is so positive. Is it visible now? Hello? Uh, not yet, Doctor. Doctor, is it the same PPT you shared with me? Yes. No, no, it, it is. No. It was different.
ओके लीव इट देन दिस सब प्रॉब्लम इन शेयरिंग दैट्स व्हाई सो दिस if uh, while selecting the uh, practices the criteria is the main important on what basis we need to select the practices say for example it should have some market potential market potential means that the problem should be of genuine nature that means if the formal uh, the test problem or the pathogen problem is very common and the solution is also common so it is not, not of that much but if it is unique and demanding then it is important and we need to also look whether for such formulations the product is already available in the market if it is available in the market what is the efficacy at what cost it is available in the market or if we are going to develop from the grassroot formulations at what cost we will be able to to uh, afford for that such formulations so there are various factors the scientific factor uh, factor is the the compound what we are giving uh, is uh, not known or known if it is known it is available in the market if it is not known and less harmful to the, uh, to the environment as per the, and the uh, practices is from our database we can supply it affordable process or if it is common we can keep the same practices uh, decimate in the uh, to the farmer for dy uh, do it yourself kind of things so we need to look from the various perspectives if the practice is common we can decimate that for dy diy approach or if it is unique we can go for the validation first if it is uh, validated the claim is correct then we need to identify the compound which is a entirely different process to uh, follow the <clears throat> phytochemistry to identify the compound and if the compound was found unique then they go for the patent and the formulation development as per the uh, scientific principles or we may go for the good formulation to go early into the market so the approaches could be diff different short term and long long term so we can if you want to go early we may opt for the short term approach but at the same time we can develop the proposals for the long term approach to get the product into the market as per the cib norms or earlier into the market as per the ipm norms or the traditional practices norms so there are the various approaches uh, depending upon which we can develop the formulations and then in vitro trial is one thing in vitro means you need to rear the insect rear the insect for the validation it is important to rear the test in the lab to check the efficacy and after doing the in vitro study we need to go for the field field validation field validation you have to <coughs> to follow the randomized dog design approach where you need to check the efficacy in the field condition if it was found suitable in the field condition then you can enter to the markets so these are in nutshell the uh, harvard formulation for the based on the grassroots uh, practices this one things do you have any question on on this anyone having any questions till this then, then i will pick up some another point many of you would have been aware now the kind of practices which we have in our database most of the practices are agriculture practices that to the plant based that's why we have taken the, uh, this topic the herbal formulation what we did in the lab you may opt some of the practices and develop the formulation as per the scientific norms scientific norms means if any of you is in Related to the biotechnology or the phytochemistry or the biochemistry, you are free to select some of the practices and develop the proposal on the, that for the formulation development. Currently, in market there are more than nine hundred pesticides. All of many of them is banned by the government of India as well as the other countries because of the toxicity and. 
this is the high time to develop the formulation which is environment environment friendly sustainable and easily uh, converted into other forms that means the uh, easily disintegrated after form uh, after applications there should not be the bio accumulation in the soil so that the soil can be the toxic or it may <coughs> uh, do the subsidiary effect into the human system or the animal system if the compound is not getting broken down quickly. So the approaches for the new formulation development or new molecule development is that it should be the green uh, through the green chemistry approach and for this green chemistry approach our database is the reservoir to develop a large number of ingredients large number of compounds even for the certain test we can develop n number of formulations but that n number of formulations cannot be marketed so the important point here is the validation to screen the, the early screen, screening of the practices which is giving the best result either with the aphid, jesse, white fly, or any kind of second pests, or the pest, pest on which you would like to develop the formulations. You would have seen the uh, publications of the lab for the termite control, for the control of vegetable pests. These are the uh, uh, formulations which have been developed from the very common practices. The plants which we have selected were not that much unique. It was uh, uh, common planted. But there are practices where the plants are unique and for that you uh, need to file the patent and as per the 60 criteria we are generally filing the patent in the name of innovator but the subsequent value additions you will be the author you will be the patent so from that point of view this is the reservoir to develop the new molecules to find the new molecules to find the mechanism of action for those new molecules or to develop the new formulations. Many people, and while we are taking, uh, calling formulations, formulations not only the mixing of the compound and putting it into, into the packets, it is the increasing the efficacy, reducing the volume of applic applications as well as the getting the quick results. Quick result means the early result. And from that point of view, whatever the systemic fungicides or the systemic insecticides are in the market, they are much susceptible for various kinds of things. And uh, currently, you uh, under, under the uh, IPM approach, new formulations, there are various new formula, uh, formulations in the, in the markets. Most of them are maybe the uh, chemical compound, but People are not aware. Say, for example, you people must have name, heard the name of Corazon. Corazon is able to control almost all certain kind of sucking pests, chewing, chewing pests, and it is in the high demand in the market. Cost is also too much. But this is the compound which has been isolated from a plant. So uh, this is in the IPM approach for, uh, formulations which have been scientifically studied, iron molecule have been identified. It was initially done by Japanese scientists. Likewise, there are very com various uh, <clears throat> molecules which have been identified from the biocontrol agent, say for example, trichoderma or pacillomyces. Oh, the Bavaria. You must have heard the name of antibiotics, milvemycin. It is being formulated for the plant against the different, different fungal pathogens and it is highly effective and good environment friendly and under the coming under the green chemistry approach. So our database is the reservoir for developing new molecule with green chemistry approach and it is open for all. Some of the practices as I have showed you is in the uh, public domain, some are not. For that you may uh, concern us essentially and look our database for the selection of the practices. But as far as the open practices are concerned, there are many from which you can extract the science. So the purpose of the Srishti lab is to bridge the gap between the informal knowledge and the formal knowledge. And here the role of students is uh, very much required and you people can develop the proposals or even 
some of you it would you would like you may develop uh, write a small review article based on any base and the kind of practices we are having by doing the prior art search on that plot what has been till date is being known in science for that that means by following the different bioinformatics approach you may develop a <clears throat> good write up or publications also you may ask any question if you would like to have and students if you have any clarifications or doubt regarding the grassroots practices and development of formulations you can ask uh, dr nirmal sir any doubts or any uh, any of you have seen our database you're all you're all working in developing your projects right writing your projects on grassroots innovation right so any doubts in that also you can ask dr nirmal he can help you any doubts regarding your projects no more doubts then i thank dr nirmal for joining us today and giving us a view of the uh, grassroot practices that has been developed into products uh, formulations for insect test uh, thank you dr for joining us today. thank you thank you uh thank you students thank you for joining us today uh, we will catch up with the uh, next session tomorrow